we're going to review the king of all board games, Monopoly. And we're going to do that right now. You guys are really going to hate me, but I really hate this game. You know what? <laughs> This game is either universally loved or universally hated. There is no in-between for some reason. And I am one of the people who absolutely loves Monopoly. Yeah, and I absolutely hate Monopoly. Monopoly. <laughs> I love this game. I have never lost a game in 30 plus years. I once... So you monopolize people when you play Monopoly. Yeah, well, it's not that I want to win. <laughs> I have to. Oh. I once played a 48-hour game of Monopoly. No joke. That is insane. Jason Swank of Rebel Force Radio, he can attest to that. It, it, was, it was pretty intense. Anyway, on the Roll and Go Game Review Show, we like to review games that are easy to learn, quick to play, and appropriate for the whole family. And some and of you are saying, none of that. no, that's not true. That's <laughs> not true. Here's the problem with Monopoly. Over the years, people have added their own house rules, and they've interpreted the rules, and nobody really knows how to play it correctly. But when you buy a new set, it comes with the instructions, and they're not long, they're not complicated, it's very easy. Now, before we go to the game board, you guys want to hang around to the very end to find out how you can win your own free copy of Monopoly, because we're going to give it away to one of you. But um, D, the, the rule book is short. It's, it's very, look, it's large print, so you can see <laughs> that it's not, it's not complicated. So you don't have to get your glasses. No. Your spectacles. Now. The average game does take 45 minutes to an hour. So it is a little bit on the longer end of the other games that we've reviewed. But in terms of learning it, it's really a piece of cake. And we're going to go to the game board right now. All right, we didn't set up the entire game board. Just enough pieces for you guys to get the idea. First of all, every player gets their own token. I picked the uh, cool... Uh, Diesel Punk race car, <laughs> and I gave to D the uh, the Schnauzer dog because she has a Schnauzer dog, and uh, we love that dog to pieces, don't we, D? Mm, yeah. <laughs> and um, a little bit of history about the game, D. This was created in 1935 in Atlantic City during the Great Depression, during Prohibition, and um, or I guess after Prohibition, but during the Great Depression, and. All of the spaces on the board represent a real street or real property in Atlantic City. Everyone gets a game piece. Everyone gets a stack of money. I'm not going to pop this open and make a mess. I'm not going to pop it open and make a mess. But everyone gets $1,500 to start. And different versions of the game may have you uh, may have you doling out more money. But in the rules, $1,500. <laughs> Like, did they got a test for, you know, the economy? For inflation? Yeah, no, inflation no, no, no. <laughs> because look, look, property is like 60 bucks, 60, okay. 200. You know, it's it's commensurate with the, the day and age of 1935. Um, so the goal is, the, the way you play is you roll the dice and you move across the board. So that's five spaces. And when you land on a space... You can buy it or pass on it. Then you have to go around the board once before you can buy anything? You, now, if you want to play a fast game, you buy immediately. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you buy immediately. So um, I, I would buy Reading Railroad because here's my strategy. My strategy is to buy all of the cheap properties, this corner, and all four railroads... And the utilities, electric company and waterworks. Basically, I'm going to be a slumlord and control transportation and power. <laughs> That's how I win the game. I don't care a thing about Boardwalk or Park Place. Everyone wants to get these two. 
the, the odds of someone landing on both of these when you have a hotel built on them is, is astronomically low. So I don't even care about them. I let other people fight over this property over here. I'm going to be the slumlord and the transportation baron. But when you, uh, when you buy a property, you get the deed. So let's say I bought Oriental Avenue. And if I get all three of the deeds, I can start building on that property. I can start putting houses. And when I put houses on it, if you land on my property and I have one house on Oriental Avenue, your rent is $30. Without a house, it's only six bucks. So the object is to buy as much property as you can and to build. Once you have four houses on a property, you can put a hotel. And you can put as many hotels on the property as you want, but you gotta build four houses first and then convert them. So, along the way, there are a couple of extra spaces like income tax where you have to pay the bank, chance where you draw a chance card, and it uh, has different actions like advance the token to the nearest railroad and pay the owner twice the rental which he or she is otherwise entitled. If the railroad is unowned, you may buy it from the bank. So you would have to go all the way over here, and since I'm going to be the transportation railroad baron, <laughs> you would have to pay me four times what the normal rent is. And I would collect it from you gladly, <laughs> gleefully, and laugh all the way. Now, if You're you- so mean. I know. <laughs> if you land on community chest, you pull one of these cards, and basically chance is things that happen uh, to you, and community chess is things that happen for you. Like Christmas fund matures and you collect $100, you get that from the bank. So you earn $100. The first, the, 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 the last person standing wins. Don't you like run out of money and that's how you- Yes. You, you, you get lose. out of the game because you run out of money. That's right. Okay. When you have completely exhausted your money, you are bankrupt and out of there. And my goal as the slum lord and the railroad <laughs> baron is to bankrupt everybody and, and win the game. To be the last man standing. And along the way, you can seize property from people who owe you money. You, it's, it, it can be a lot of fun. It can also destroy marriages and friendships. <laughs> my my mother-in-law threw the board across the room at me because when I win, when I bankrupt you, I'm going to laugh uncontrollably. I can't help it. I, I don't want to. I have to. Um, but that's how the game is played. That is how you play Monopoly D. Mm -hmm. And look, I know that there are some people watching this right now that are like, Johnny, I'm so disappointed that you're reviewing Monopoly. But Monopoly is the true king of all board games. I'm so disappointed he's reviewing Monopoly too. Well, okay, here's, here's the deal. You gotta play with me because I guarantee you it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh -huh. um, yeah, see, so I'm, I'm all about sportsmanship and I'm all about being nice and if if you beat me and you laugh at me, that would be the end of our friendship. And like, it's this I laugh. Would, it's this laugh. <laughs> no, no, I would be the one to throw the board at you and probably cuss you out and be like, that's it. I'm never talking to you. Yeah, again. I can't get any of my friends to play me at Monopoly. <laughs> but, but, but it's okay. It's I probably love, a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I love to play it. And uh, there are a lot of hardcore gamers out there who, who think Monopoly is... You know, it's too basic and too rudimentary and, you know, it doesn't have enough complicated strategies. There are strategies. I just told you one of mine to be the slumlord and the transportation baron. That's pretty good. Yeah. There, there are all kinds of different strategies that you can employ because your goal is to control enough property that you can bankrupt everybody else. And you don't have to have the entire board. You only need some key pieces of property in the right place. And the slum, the, the, the slums, the low rent district is the best because everybody hits those spaces as they pass go. They hit them more frequently than any other properties on the board. So now that you know that, 
next time you play, you can you can uh, put that strategy into into play. I haven't played Monopoly in like ten years. Well, you know what? It's time. <laughs> it's time. I thought you were something in my eye. It's time. Um, again, I love it. It's the best-selling board game in the world. There are thousands of different uh, variations. variations of it. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're doing the classic. I like the classic, no frills, original version. I believe it or not, I have a Star Wars version. Yeah, I do too. And I, I have two Star Wars do. versions. Yeah. <laughs> I have a Disney version also. <laughs> I have the I have the Avengers Monopoly. I've got. Um, I've got a couple of different versions of it, but the classic version is my favorite to play. And, did, you, um, did you hear that they're changing one of the game pieces? It's like the iron or something? Well, no, they added a cat. And this year they are changing all of the pieces to reflect contemporary times. And right now you can get exactly. Monopoly games with both the classic pieces and the new pieces. But later this year, they're going to phase out the classic pieces. Mm. It's a marketing gimmick. They'll always come back with the classic. I ain't scared. <laughs>